Hey there, professor, look what I brought. Now tell me what's my rock. All right, hey everyone, welcome to a special edition of What's My Rock. I'm your geology professor, Dr. Abstract, and we're doing something new this time. We're doing it on Zoom. Uh, we have Lindsay with us, and Lindsay, what city are you Zooming in from? I am Zooming in from Sacramento, California. Sacramento, okay, yeah, and you emailed me, and, and you wanted me to have a look at your rock, but but there wasn't any time you were coming down into San Bernardino, so um, you were like, well, gosh, I'll just mail it to you, so I got your rock in the mail. Um, it's not a very big rock, so it's cheap to mail, and I, I'll mail it back to you when we're done. Um, are, are you a regular rock hounder, or is this a rock that you just kind of fell into somehow? Honestly, um, I can't recall where the rock came from. I've had it for probably 12, 15 years now. Um, it looked interesting to me, so I've always kept it. But I honestly couldn't tell you where, where I got it from. I do enjoy rock hounding, though, too. At the same time, in my spare time, I, I like um, going uh, gold panning and stuff like that, too. So, Yeah, well, you're not far from the Sierras up there, so it's pretty easy to go to, the, go to gold country. Yes, it is. And uh, we got some good, good stuff up in the river. And uh, I'm also um, very much into uh, gems gemology okay. and stuff like that so okay all right so here we are um here's the the rocky sam i'm gonna unpack it here i can tell it's special you got it in a special little bag here <laughs> no i just thought i'd send it and i don't oh, know okay oh, that's fine <laughs> something small because um, it is small it's very small okay so here's our um here's the rock um and you know just some first at first glance um what i see is that it it looks a little bit me metallic right would mm -hmm. you agree yeah yeah so yes it, yeah. not 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 quite like a metal but almost like a metal we would call that in the geology world we call that sub metallic that means just under metallic so um uh, but it's definitely got a shiny a shiny look to it um it's pretty cool looking too it's nice and smooth i can see why you kept it around because it just has there's something very satisfying about it isn't it yeah, um, it's, there's, it's different on all all sides. Yeah, like, yeah, this side here is kind of, it's irregular. It's got little pits in it. Um, but then this side is very smooth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what's interesting is we've got these, it's kind of lumpy. It's like, like these little blobs. And I think mm -hmm. that's important here. Or they, or they kind of look like veins, kind of. Well, yeah, like, little... I, I, like, like that right there. That kind of looks like a vein. Yeah, yeah right there. But mostly what I'm what i see here um this is very smooth and blobby um especially those those these little blobs um mm. right here and this this shape of a of a mineral um uh, there's a, a quite a few names we give to this one might be uh botryoidal which is looks mm -hmm. like clusters of grapes i don't think that's quite what this this is not quite botryoidal this is something we call reniform reniform Okay. Okay, and that R E N I is Latin or Greek for kidney, so kidney oh. shaped. Okay, you know, like when you go into renal failure. Um, yes. Well, not you, not you. I just, you know, when <laughs> someone goes into renal failure, um, that's the same word as reniform. So I think the the shape of this or or the crystal habit we would call reniform, um, and I and I think that helps me get a clue on on what this might be. Um, did you think you may have had a meteorite? Is that why you sent it to me? I, I did like I, for the longest time. I thought it was because it when I looked up um, online the uh, characteristics uh, of a meteorite, and mm -hmm. that seemed to meet all the criteria of it. But then um, after I sent it off to you, I was watching some other videos mm -hmm. that had that had me kind of like mm, I think it might be something else now. Well, let's let's do one little test. This is a rare earth magnet. And I, I like to tie it to a neodymium magnet. Yeah, it's a it's a neodymium magnet. That's right. It's a it's a rare earth element, um, and it makes very good magnets. And I like to tie it to a really long string. Um, the reason is is because then when you hold it up, it gets very very sensitive. I'm going to gently move it by, and we're going to watch to see if it gets attracted. There we go. So this is definitely a, a, attracted. I would say that it's weakly magnetic because notice that when I put this strong magnet pretty close to it, 
it's not like it's like going over there like gangbusters. I kind of have to get it right on there for it to mm. for it to click on. So it's it's going to be. I would say this is this is not strongly magnet. In fact, when I pull it, I can't even. It's hard to pull the crystal across. Actually, there we go. I got it, but it'll fall off if I pull too hard. Okay, so it's 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 weakly magnetic. Okay. Um, but that that I think that's an important characteristic um, of what I what I think this probably is. And by the way, meteorites, an iron meteorite is magnetic, so um, that may be some clue. You probably saw that on the internet. That one an important test mm -hmm. for an iron meteorite is that it has to be magnetic. But there are there are other things that are um, yeah that are also magnetic. Yeah, I, so, I realize uh, I'm that. Gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do a test here. This is a um, this is a a porcelain plate. And okay. this is a, a classic test that we teach introductory geology students when they when they first learn to identify rocks and minerals. Um, I'm going to perform something called a streak test. And that means I'm going to try to make a mark on this porcelain plate, and we're going to see what the color of the streak is. Um, this mineral, I believe, is what we call hematite, H-E-M-A-T-I-T-E. -E. It's an yeah. oxidized iron. It's an iron ore, essentially. Have you heard of hematite before? Uh, I'm a gold panner. I know well of hematite. You know, okay, great. You know all about hematite. That's right. So, and do you know what happens if I put hematite on a streak plate? So this was the this was what had me second guessing what it was after I had uh, saw this. I hadn't seen these before the streak test before, and so I, I know it has something to do with it coming out black or making a mark and not making a mark. Something correct. Well, first of all, it has to make a mark. That's the first step. And then when it makes a mark, it needs to be a brown mark. So brown, sort of brownish, dark red, dark brown, those those marks, those streaks are a, a good test for hematite. Uh, and there are there there are other minerals that give streaks. Like there there's another iron mineral called magnetite, which is highly magnetic. You've probably heard of that. That comes up when you gold pan. That'll make a black streak, but hematite will make a brown streak. Um, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and try it, and we're gonna see what we get. All right. Now, I have to make a few of these marks. Mm -hmm. There we go. I see them. I see them. All right, and here's a, uh, a close-up view of that. And as you can see, the the streak marks are are brown, a nice earthy brown. Um, but this this test is positive for hematite. Okay. Um, I thought it, I thought it might have been magnetite too. Is it, ma is it hematite and magnetite kind of close the same or? So what hematite and magnetite have in common is they're both iron oxides. That's oxygen plus iron, um, and uh, they're both pretty common minerals. I mean, what they don't have in common is that uh, magnetite is highly magnetic and has a black streak. Hematite is weakly magnetic and has a brown to reddish streak. Also, they have different crystal habits. Uh, magnetite is usually going to be little grains. Um, sometimes it can make pretty little, um, like crystalline looking things, like little octahedra. Uh, hematite has a lot of, has a great variety of crystal habits or, or appearances. Um, and the one that, the one that you have is, is, I'm going to call that reniform. Uh, and in fact, it has a special name in the gem and mineral world. Um, they call it kidney ore. Um, one of the other differences between magnetite and hematite is that magnetite has a chemical formula Fe3O4, hematite has a formula Fe2O3. So they have different amounts of iron and oxygen in them. So chemically, they're they're different. Um, structurally, they're different. There's a lot of very nerdy scientific differences between. Oh, them, I like um, that stuff. As, as, I, as like well. I was looking at the cracked face of that of that the little rock. You can see almost little specks of like kind of glittery like shiny bits in it and then it also yeah. kind of looks oxidated and rusty too so when you see that kind of rusty looking color that's always a clue that you have some iron oxide okay. product or it has iron that was oxidized or something like that that's always a always a clue for iron um well not always but usually a clue for iron uh but if you saw little specks on it in a hand lens or you look in really close up in a microscope um, yeah, sometimes hematite can have these little specks. In fact, there's a type of hematite called specular hematite, which can be very sparkly and shiny as well. So hematite mm -hmm. has a tremendous variety. Um, but what I do want to show you, I'm going to share my screen here. 
and I'm going to show you some pictures. There you go. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, that's cool. It looks like it was like liquid at one time, like it was once like melted. Yeah, it kind of looks like yeah, like it was little little blobs. To find this, I typed in kidney ore in Flickr, so you can find this for yourself as well. Um, but this is that that reniform crystal habit that I was telling you about, um, and this is this is that that classic look. This is a hematite. This is from England. So I think if you imagine your your mineral that you sent me is just like someone took a hammer to this and made a bunch of fragments. And that's basically mm -hmm. what you have. You have a little chunk of, of this kind of a thing. This one is, is uh, also a reniform hematite. Um, and it's got the, that blobby look to it. It's got some of that, that mm -hmm, uh, the rust, the rust color that, that you saw on, on your specimen. This picture is a little darker, but again, more of that reniform texture to it, big blobs. Yeah. And that's, that's what you have anyway. So that's what I think you've got. You've got, uh, reniform hematite or what we call kidney ore uh and uh and what do you think about that i think you, you're the professional you you're the professor and you know what you're talking about i believe it i'm i've been wrong many times so <laughs> there was one other test that i was trying to do on it where they said um to scratch a window in it and i know that the um the meteorites they have those um crazy alien looking like patterns in it when you get a drop of acid on it and stuff. Uh -huh. And then it uh, brings out the, you, the grains. The patterns that look like yeah. this kind of. Yeah, right? those, cool those cool grains. And so when I was trying yeah. to uh, scratch a little tiny corner of that thing, it was like I couldn't get anything to scratch. I was trying metal files and everything, and it was like nothing would scratch in it. So I took my Dremel to it and did the little corner of it. When I looked at it really up close with my little... uh uh, gem looking um, magnifiers. Uh, uh, it didn't have those. It was just a smooth. Yeah, what you're talking about is something called um, Widman satin pattern, which is uh, sort of these cross hatching. In uh, it happens in iron meteorites. Right. I think the reason you weren't scratching it, by the way, is hematite can be pretty hard. It can be hard or harder than glass. That's probably why you're having difficulty scratching it. You could probably scratch it with a piece of quartz. Quartz is hard enough to scratch yeah. it. Um, but a metal file, it may not scratch it, and um, and even glass, regular old window glass, might not scratch it either. So, so how come it, when uh, like when I go gold panning, like hematite's one of our, you know, it's our enemy there. You know what I mean? Because it's the black sand. Uh, so how come in panning when we are gold panning, why are we finding it as grains of so much grains of sand? And it's I know it's the heavier sediment, but I mean, why instead of pieces of it? in like the river because i've never found a piece of hematite in the river like that um, right so why is there so much magnetite in stream beds is i mean a hema yeah. first of all i don't think it's hematite i think it's probably magnetite did you do you have a reason to think it's hematite i mean i it could be magnetite i don't i'm not i mean i don't have one of those uh spectrum things on me to to know right. exactly which one <laughs> sure, it is of course i i just i just feel we call it black sand in the in the yeah, it could world, be. So. It could be a mixture. There could be some hematite. It's probably mostly magnetite. The reason I say that is that um, magnetite is a pretty common um, mineral that shows up all through the Sierras. There's granites, granodiorites. There's all kinds of weird metamorphic rocks throughout the Sierras. They're all going to have a pretty good share of magnetite in them, um, and they're going to get washed down into the river. They're denser. They get. They remain while the other stuff, all the lighter stuff, gets washed away, and so it just gets more concentrated that same process is what concentrates gold in the rivers right so gold has a high density mm -hmm. and so does magnetite so those things are going to tend to accumulate together in these little patches on the riverbed in plaster deposits and in black sand so so that, that's why people look in the black sand to try to find the gold because mm -hmm. those are pockets of higher density so um, but i think it's probably going to mostly be magnetite that's in those black sands that that's something okay. you could test. You could test for that by bringing a powerful magnet, and that stuff will probably stick very well to a magnet. It'll be hard to get off it the does. magnet. Yeah, it that's does. Probably, that's it does. Probably going to be the best way to, to get it out of the pan is to use a magnet. And get it, exactly. It out of there. Exactly. Actually, if you go to a rock shop and you find a piece of hematite, maybe pick up a piece of magnetite. You can compare them. I was going to say that, but then I realized I'm about to send you your piece of hematite back to you. So you don't need to, you don't need to buy a piece of hematite because you already own one. But you might want to find a, you know, you could probably find a good chunk of magnetite um, at a rock shop 
And uh, those would be good to compare with each other and just to have an idea mm -hmm. for for what they look like, what they, you know, their properties. And, and, um, and then when, you know, when you go up into the, go up gold panning, um, you know, have a look to see what you got and um, convince yourself whether or not it's magnetite or hematite or both. My vote is probably magnetite just because I think that's what's probably going on. So, all right. And then I, I, I also wanted to ask you um, exactly to what uh, the difference between a mineralogist and a geologist. Oh, that's a great question. So um, I would say that all mineralogists are geologists. Some okay. geologists are mineralogists. How about that? So mineralogy is a specialty is a subspecialty of geology. Uh, and a mineralogist is interested in, in, in studying the origin and the formation and the structure and the composition of minerals. Um, mm. And there are other geologists that don't specialize in that. Like, for example, there are geologists that study faults, right? And they don't, now they're going to know about mineralogy. They'll know their minerals, but they don't specialize in it. They're not going to perform research and publish articles about about minerals per se, they're going to publish about how rocks break. Uh, there are other geologists that uh, specialize in fossils and they're called paleontologists, for example. So there's all kinds okay. of different specialties. And then like a gemologist, is that another, you'd be a geologist, but you'd be a specialty in gems. That's a subspecialty of mineralogy. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So they're interested in minerals that make pretty min minerals that are pretty basically, right? right, that are valuable because we think they're pretty. It's really, a gemologist is more of a, a link between science and the, and the jewelry industry. All right. Uh, well, Lindsay, thank you so much. Um, I hope, hope uh, this was productive for you. And uh, you have a cool little sample of hematite, and I'll, I'll be mailing it back to you. I miss my little rock. It's been a while. He's just seen it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it back to you, I promise. I know my my mom was joking around saying he's trying to steal your rock. I said no, I don't think so. I have enough rocks, I promise you. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Thank you, I appreciate it very much. Um, it was nice meeting you, and I do appreciate you taking a look at my rock for me. It, it was my pleasure. Uh, and uh, this was an experiment on Zoom. I think it went pretty well. Um, and uh, if you would like me to look at your rock on Zoom, uh, please send me an email at whatsmyrock at yahoo.com. I'm Dr. Abstract for What's My Rock. And thanks to Lindsay. And happy rock hounding, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Lindsay. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. Yeah, I've seen it all. That's why they call me a professional I know you're proud of what you got But this rock ain't worth dilly squad I'm not saying that you'll never be wealthy But this preoccupation doesn't seem healthy Don't give up your day job You better keep it a hobby on the weekend